What do we need to know to match a preamp to an amplifier? Good question. Eric in Auckland, New Zealand, writes to us and says, Hi Paul, is it okay to match a different brand of preamp to another brand of power amp? If yes, what are the major requirements or specs that we have to be careful about matching the two with? Otherwise, do you have to think a combo from the same brand will always be a better idea? Certainly a safer idea, Eric. If you stay within a brand, obviously the engineers have worked hard to make sure that their equipment works together. And that's something probably more to do with synergy than with technical attributes. So we're going to hit the technical attributes first to answer your question. And then the second part will go about synergy, which is somewhat of a, a common theme that we talk about a lot. But again, as I've said here in the past few days, we chink away at these ideas. We, we, we just chip away, just chip, 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 chip. And we say them over and over, but in different ways and from different approaches in answers to different questions. And I think that's, that's really how we get to the core of this, to learn how all of it works. And I, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos to try and educate yourselves and to, to learn what's going on with high-end audio, because it's, it's pretty special. It's, it's very cool. OK, so technically speaking, we want to make sure that the impedances match. And aside from that, you want to make sure that you have the type of input and output matching as close as you can. Not critical, but if we can, we want to match that. All right, so what does that mean? Well, the impedance, let's start with the impedance. You always want to go from a low impedance to a high impedance. So you want your power amp to be at least 10 times higher impedance than the output of your preamplifier, whatever that may be. That's a good rule of thumb. And more is better, right? 100 times, 20 times is better. But at a minimum, always, no, never less than 10 times. So if you have an output impedance of, oh, geez, 100 ohms, you want to make sure that that is driving no less than 1,000 ohms, and you'd be better off at 10,000 ohms or even higher. Okay? So my recommendation is to make sure that your power amplifier, because a lot of times manufacturers don't spec the output impedance of their preamp, or they don't pay that much attention to it, so you don't really know. Let's, let's assume that the output impedance of our preamplifier is, is something that we, we can't know. Well, if you always make sure that the input to your power amplifier is at least 30K, 20K, somewhere around that, or higher, then you'll be all right. It, the two will match just fine. Because e even a tube preamplifier that has a, a, a cathode follower on it for its output is going to be low enough impedance to be able to drive the cables and the input impedance to the amplifier. So if you can keep it up there in the tens of thousands of ohms, you'll be okay. Second part, single-ended or balanced. If you have balanced inputs on your preamp, you'd like, uh, on, on your power amp, you'd like to feed it from the balanced outputs on your preamp. Balanced is always going to be better than single-ended. I know, howled, no, it's wrong, you're full of, you know what? Okay, that's fine. Let's not, it's, it's high-end audio. Yeah? Okay. Let's, let's, let's not get too carried away. Just trust me on this one. Balanced is going to sound better than single-ended. So if you have balanced to balanced, you're in good shape. If you have balanced out on your preamp, but only single-ended input on your amp, then go single-ended. Don't, you know, I hesitate to say don't, but in my experience, if you can stay away from these converters that take like the balanced output of a preamp and then narrow it down to a single-ended. Try not to do that unless you have to. I've never seen a preamp that didn't have both balanced and single-ended on it. Okay, last part, synergy. This is where you either really know what you're doing, you've read the reviews, you've gone to the dealer, you've taken it home and tried it, you've done whatever you need to do to see if the two match each other because Mixing and matching equipment is a real art. 
it, it can be a, a good challenge. And a lot of people are great at it. I mean, they're just, you know, it's like blending. Do you blend fine wines? Well, probably not. <laughs> my mother, my mother used to take a little bit of white wine and pour a little bit of red wine and she'd make herself a rosé. And, and she loved it. That, 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 anyway, that, that was my mother. Uh, hardly a connoisseur. Uh, and if the wine wasn't cold enough, even the red wine, she'd throw ice cubes into it. So, but uh, anyway, that was a long time ago. Mixing and matching, blending, you know, a, a tube amp with a solid state amp to try and get your, a, a, a tube preamp with a solid state amp fire to try and get your system synergy working right is a real art. So in that case, I really strongly recommend staying with one vendor if you can, because unless you know, unless you've had the opportunity to try them for yourself and make your own decision, then sticking with one company is always a really good idea, as long as you trust that company. Thanks. Hope everything works out for you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.